Hey everyone, um, it's day six here. It's after 9 p.m. my time and um, it's been one of those days and I thought that I would just jump on anyway and just um, go live real quick and talk here about um, the sixth thing that I've learned from um, hosting the Widowed Parent podcast. But first, actually, I, I wanted to tell you I'm also um, working on, I, I'm working on an episode, should be coming up probably in the next month or so, um, a bunch of people have been asking, they you know, finding themselves now as, you know, the only adult in the house and needing to take care of the whole house, maybe catch up on some, um, some learning of how to take care of their house. And so uh, a whole bunch of people have written in with questions, really awesome questions, how to caulk things, how to fix a leaky faucet, how to fix a toilet, what are some basic tools, what should you have, all kinds of good stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about that because it's a topic that I love and I have a contractor lined up to talk with us. But I wanted to show you guys real quick today this. It's probably backwards, so I'll read it to you. Taro Liquid Ant Baits. So this is a really practical tip. Um, I have a lot of trouble with this in my kitchen and I was paying for a while, um, I hate to admit how long, one of these pest companies that came every quarter, I think, and they would spray outside um, to try to get rid of these dumb little ants and they would leave these little ant bait stations and I think they charged me like 150 bucks a quarter or I, I can't remember it was a lot anyway you can get at Home Depot this is like I don't know six dollars or less than ten dollars I think and there's six traps in here and I have to show you because normally I have these ants in my kitchen and I was shocked to see in my podcast studio the other day, right over here, there were a bunch of ants. So look, I put one of these bait stations right here. And I don't know if you can see the ants in it because there's a label on the thing and it's small. But um, anyway, I put the thing out and I came down the next day and like... 99% of the ants were gone and now one day later they're all gone so super happy about that and I also got at Home Depot some spray stuff that I can spray the foundation myself and I need to do that again but um, I did it once before and it took me like I don't know five minutes to walk around the house and this bottle of spray um, hey Wendy good to see you um, this bottle of spray that I got was like I don't know $15 or something it's probably gonna last me for years so um, I would encourage you to look into that if you have trouble with ants. I think it was super easy DIY thing. So anyway, um, uh, in addition to home improvement, um, I've been learning a lot, as I said, about widowed parenting from my various guests. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit about what I learned from Karen Millsap. And Karen was on episode 14. Um, and I'll put a link in the, in the comments here. But what I, one of the, th well, I learned a lot from her, but one of the things that I took away from it is um, that I need to remember that I'm really setting an example for my kids on how I lose, uh, how I choose to live my life after loss. Hey, Katie. Hey, Trina. Good to see you guys. Um, and so I just, I want to read you actually just what Karen said here. She said, um, when my husband died, I recognized that how, how I handled that traumatizing event was going to directly impact my son's life and his character. Um, I felt hopeless, I felt lost, I felt drained and broken, and I had to acknowledge that this was either going to destroy me and my son will lose both of his parents, or I could be an example to him that no matter how difficult life may be, you always have a choice to survive. And I thought that was really powerful, this idea that, like... She already had one tragedy. Her husband was tragically murdered. She was 29 years old, and their son was like two, I think, approximately that age. And she said that she spent the whole first, I don't know, year or more maybe in a fog. And um, one day I think she was thinking about the choices that her husband's murderer had made that day, the different choices he had made that led up to this action. And she realized that she had choices too, and she could choose to live again. And, um, but especially I thought the part about how she drew the, the direct line to say that what, how, how she chose to live or not live would really impact her son. And she didn't want him to, in effect, lose both parents by her not figuring out how to live again. So, um, 
I really, I, I really liked uh, talking to her about that. She had a lot of other things to say. She actually has gone on to um, do some coaching for widowed parents, maybe widowed moms specifically. Um, also has done a bunch of work. She used to be an HR professional, so she's done work with like going back into the workplace after loss and helping um, advise both workplaces and employees around that topic. Um, she talks about confidence checkpoints and um, gosh, all kinds of things. It was episode 14, so um, I'd encourage you to check that out if if it sounds like it might be interesting. And also, actually, I'm going to put a link in, in, the, in the comments to Karen's TED Talk. Um, she did a TEDx talk called Use Your Tragedy to Change the World. And I don't know, I just, I thought, wow, that, that's, that's awesome. Um, my kind of woman, I guess. I, I just, I love that, that, that theme that she's got. Um, so anyway, hey, Nicola, good to see you. Uh, so anyway, um, wanted to share this with you guys. This is actually kind of fun. I've been wondering if doing this, it's, well, it's 920 my time. Um, you know, if that's a better time to catch people or early evening or midday, I, I know people have all different schedules. So, um, thought I'd experiment with different times. And it's been one of those kind of days where I've just, you know, you know how it goes. And now all of a sudden it's nine o'clock and it's time to, uh, to come on here. So anyway, glad I could see you tonight. Um, and I want, I wanted to remember to show you that ant bait thing. And also I got a book in the mail today. Um, I think I'll be talking more about that probably in the coming days, but it's from the family handyman magazine, which I just, I love that magazine. I used to get family handyman and then I stopped working on so many projects, so I unsubscribed because they were just piling up. Um, but they have a really cool book called, it's something like 100 Things Every Homeowner Needs to Know. So I thought that would be a good place to start with our Homeowner 101 uh, series on the people have been asking for tips and advice on, you know, seasonal checklists and maintenance, what kind of maintenance needs to be done, or all kinds of great questions people have. Um, and actually, I, I have a survey monkey where I'm asking people to um, to tell me what some of their biggest challenges are, what, you know, what they want to know about when it comes to homes and home, you know, home maintenance, home care, fixing, all those kind of things. So if you go, pardon me, if you go to my website, widowedparentpodcast.com, um, there should be a button, I think it's over on the right, where, to the survey, um, if you feel like jumping over there. I'm still taking some input, and soon I'm going to be putting together the, the content for that episode, so, um, Anyway, what else? That's that's maybe all for today. I'm going to come back tomorrow and talk about... What am I talking about tomorrow? Uh, oh, post-traumatic growth. This is something that I learned about from Justin Yop, who wrote um, a book about widowed dads. So that was really interesting. So I'll talk some more about that tomorrow. Um, I do have a guide that I put together. I thought it was a good time, now that I'm about 20 episodes in, to kind of step back and reflect a little bit. Um, and, and, and I kind of, you know put pencil to paper and thought about what are some of the main things that I've learned so far from the different guests that I've talked to and um, called out 10 things and put them in a document. And so if you want to um, take a look at that, you can. It's free. It's at um, my website. So jennylisk.com slash top 10. Um, you can download that if you want to. And I think that's all. So thank you everybody for joining and um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.